So this is a Catalan on the Hitchhiker XF. And right now we're just going to check, uh, we're going to measure the um, load force while I manipulate the hitch. And the hitch is through both friction points. And uh, we're at once, so it's got some of the stretch taking out of it. So we're going to give it a pull and we'll measure the uh, forces. <laughs> So this is the smaller RIT, as you can see it's under all of the friction pins. And we are going to uh, pull that, this time I have the remote. And what I'm, what I'm feeling and measuring, and well what I'm measuring is not what I'm feeling, but the controllability um, that I get from the hitch. I mean, Obviously a single hitch will start to lock up, but I'm getting a feel for the control from that. Pulling. And they were coming up to, uh, there's about 200 pounds, and I'm pulling down on the hitch just to keep it. If I was hanging on this, this is what I'd be feeling right now. We're going to bring it up to about 500 pounds and see what it takes to release the hitch. So it gets really hard, but I'm still, I'm still releasing that okay. Now one more time. There it's holding at about 500 pounds and with a little bit of effort, I'm still able to get that hitch to release. I'm not ready to do it yet, but we're going to eventually pull on that and see what it actually releases at. So this is a Catalan with the Marlowe uh, Viper. It's a six wrap and through all the pins. So if I was on the rope, my 200 pounds would be held comfortably, and now I'm going to release it. It's a little bit grabbier than the RIT was, at least for that first. So there it's holding 200 pounds again. And that's one technique I use sometimes when I'm trying to get it to release. Just give it a, a twin, a turn, and it comes right loose. So now we're going to bring it up to about 500 pounds and see if I can release it. And notice it kind of sets into it. it. Actually starts to slip. It went up to 600 pounds. And I can still release it. It's a little grabby, but I can still release that at 600 pounds. Bring it back up to uh, there again. It's 600 pounds and releasing the hitch. So this is Marlowe Boa, and it's uh, also uh, six wraps. Now, oftentimes I'll use five wraps in all the pins. Same, going through all the pins, and 
we'll just get a feel for this one as we go from normal 200 pounds up to around 600. The reason I choose around 600 is because that's about the um, working load that you're supposed to be able to put on any of these. There's coming up to my weight, about 200 and something. Still pretty controllable on the hitch. There's even 295 and I'm doing pretty good with being able to control that. Now we're going to bring it up to about five or 600 pounds and see if I can release it. There's 600. I can, it's tight, but I can still pull it loose. Again, there's almost 700 pounds. Pretty tight, hard to pull, but I can get that to come loose. All right. So this is the Innovation Hitch. Again, one of the advantages of the Innovation Hitch is if you're new and you want to make sure that you're getting positive engagement, it engages um, very well. Um, and everything's through the pins. And we'll give this a pull and see how far we go. All right, there's about my weight and it's nice and smooth to release. You can see when I bring it up to a climber's weight, still quite easy to release. If I used this a whole bunch, it would eventually get a little bit tighter up here at the top but I can break it loose. So now we're gonna bring it up to six or 700 pounds and see if it can be released. And maybe it won't do that. Maybe it's gonna slip around 300 pounds. Yeah, it's gonna just keep slipping at uh, around 300 looks like about all it will hold. So if you were a 300 plus pound climber, you'd have to well, find, a, find a different add some wraps or do something but again that's quite easy to release even with that excess weight on there uh, it wouldn't it wouldn't lock up now if you weighed more than 350 pounds you'd be creeping down the rope all right let's take a look at that okay this is a uh, catalan and I've already had like I set on it, so it's had 200 pounds put on there. And we're just gonna pull on it and see when it releases. Assuming it will release. All right, there's 270 pounds and it's gonna just sit there and things kinda settle down and it's holding at 260. Give it a little more, tightening it up. Now we're sitting at about 400 pounds. We'll tighten it up. You can see the hitch is starting to stretch out. There's 600 pounds, 800 pounds. And the hitch is still making some adjustments. I think we're getting close to 1,000 pounds. And now I'm seeing the hitch actually continue to slip. So it looks like the maximum pull on this hitch cord is going to be around a thousand pounds. I haven't touched it, and it's just gonna sit there and slide. Just for fun, let me see if I can still release it. Give it a little bit of a twist, it's really hard. I was still able to release it even after all of that. So we're going to pull it again. We'll just keep pulling until this time it starts to slip and see if it does it at a thousand pounds again. Now it's slipping around four or five hundred pounds. After it's had a, a couple times of uh, being released, it looks like 
it can hold about 400 pounds until it starts to creep. Alright, so all I've done is brought this back up the rope. And uh, this is, I haven't retied the hitch, but I have put in the friction plug. And I gave it three turns. I think that's what I said. One. Three turns with the friction plug, and we'll see um, what the difference is now with what it holds. Ready? friction plug we brought it up to around 2,000 pounds that became a little uncomfortable to be next to uh, so we released it and then uh, brought it back up after releasing the hitch and uh, was still holding around here just over 1,500 pounds and then we released it you can see that at around 2,000 pounds, the um, upper dog bone was starting to dig into the rope. So the point being is, if you were coming down with extra friction and you had a doubled load, you would be able to hold that load at 400 pounds, whereas before it would start to slip. So we could see from our prior tests that this hitch cord in this configuration would start to slip at a few hundred pounds. It was still controllable even at higher loads than that, but if you had 
a two person load on there you wouldn't want to all of a sudden have a hitch cord that worked perfectly at your weight of say 200 pounds and then as soon as you put two people on there it would start to slip so the friction plug we can screw in for long descents it saves wear on the hitch cord it saves wear um, it just makes it easy to operate so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put my normal uh, say 200 pounds of weight I'll put my 200 pounds of weight on here and I'm going to screw the friction plug in not all the way but quite a ways in and you will notice and I'll just have to explain it but you would notice a remarkable difference in how easy it is to control the top of the hitch because now you have three additional friction points you have the regular slick pin you have the dog bone and then behind there is the plug that's putting a slight bend in the rope and it's also providing that third friction point bringing it back up to my 200 pounds I can just easily easily control my hitch now with my normal climbing weight on there there's 200 pounds again I'll just use one finger on there there's 200 pounds 200 pounds I'm just coming down the rope and I'll do this in the tree but that's that's the point of how it's saving all of this and it just makes that so much easier to operate even there I'm still holding 200 pounds I look at put my finger on that hitch it's just hardly anything and we'll just be coming down the rope And now I'm going to just leave it alone for a minute. And let's say we had a two-person... Oops, I just ran out of throw. All right, I'm going to back it up. Okay, without retying the hitch, all I've done is gone back up the rope. So, and the friction plug right now is disengaged. I mean, it's screwed in, but it's disengaged. I haven't, I haven't gone into the rope yet at all. So, we will go to my normal 200-pound pull. There's 200 pounds, and you can see up here that it's not difficult, but it's a little more difficult to uh, release that hitch. Now I'm gonna screw this friction plug in. Oh, let's give it about halfway. And we'll bring it back up to my 200 pounds. There's my 200 pounds, and notice how easy it is to release that. Now we're going to bring it up to, say, 400 pounds. Say there was two of me on this, or you're a 400-pound climber. You're full of muscle, and you're like a gorilla up in the tree. So there's your, there's your 400 pounds. There's two of me on this rope right now. Normally, that would be really hard to release. And even with 200 pounds on there, or 400 pounds, I just easily released my hitch. Again, we're going up to 400 pounds, so if there were two of me hanging on this device right now, I could sit here and hang all day, it's not going to creep, and I would stay in place. I'm not going to go to the ground until I'm ready to go to the ground, and again, this is just with two fingers. I just release that, and down we go. So that's the function of the extra dynamic friction that can be applied during a descent. Now I can back this out. And now I'm back to, now I'm back to having just a regular friction hitch. 
it takes uh, a lot more. If I bring it up to 200 pounds, it gets really hard to get that, I mean up to 400 pounds, it gets really hard to start to release that. I can still do that, but it's really hard now. I can't, I'm not gonna be able to, if I bring that up to 400 pounds, I wouldn't be able to do that with just one finger, two fingers. And then I can screw the friction plug back in. And now it's really easy to operate again. Add out a throw on the hydraulic ram, bring it up to uh, double my load, and I can still release that quite easily. So that's kind of how that works. So here you can see where I brought it up to a climber's weight, easily control the hitch. I dropped it back down. Then we brought it up really high where it would be like double my load and put in the extra friction and I was still able to quite easily control the hitch and also keep it from slipping or creeping. It would hold my weight where it normally wouldn't have without the friction hitch. Alright, before I start breaking things, this is a 6 wrap French Perific and I'm going to pull on this and see when it slips or if it slips. So this is a test, a brake test, more or less out of curiosity, because we know the hitch cord will slide down the rope before the rope breaks. But at what point will something break? We are going to give it a pull. stepping it up until it finally let go. So well, there's the numbers on the RIT and it went up to 4,429 pounds. test results for the BOA. It went up to 3791. Alright, this will be the fourth run for this same hitchhiker. Again, just absolutely nothing to it. Again, tied with a uh, double overhand and a steeper or not. And this is an RIT I've been I've climbed on for a while, so it would, might be a little less than 
maximum but we're really testing the uh, hitchhiker at this point and it broke right there it says a maximum of 4620 and this is our hitchhiker without the captive eye in other words it would be used with a swivel eye carabiner you know a carabiner with a captive eye on it it could be an eye to eye swivel um, And any other kind of a pulley it could be uh, rock exoticas pulley I'll show those a little bit and let's see this one broke at 4967 pounds So this is a 10 millimeter climbing line and a, no this is a 9 millimeter climbing line and an 8 millimeter uh, hitch cord and there's one, two, three, four, five wraps. And so I pull that to about, well there's 400 pounds already. So let me see if I can release the hitch. Oh that's really hard at 300 pounds. That would, would consider that locked up. So now let's see if I can just run this down and maintain about 200 pounds. I'm trying to use three hands here. So I want to get up to say my climbing weight. Um, kind of grabby. I mean, it's that's kind of hard, but it's manageable. There I would be going down. Let's see what it slips at if it's going to slip. So far it's still holding. And that's going up pretty high. Is it going to slip at all? like it slips at about 1,500 pounds. And there I'm getting back to my climbing weight. And it's pretty hard, but it's not too bad. Again, I'd be holding my weight. I wouldn't be going anywhere. And then I can release it. Now, just for fun, let's put this would be classic for a really grippy or a climbing line that's kind of hard. So now, we'll back that off a little bit. And we'll see, because it's a smaller climbing line, I've pretty much threaded that all the way in. All right, now we're gonna pull on it, bring it up to uh, climbing weight, 282 pounds, and it's much easier to do. That's still a very uh, grippy climbing line. But even with 300 pounds on there, I can get it to release without too much trouble. So now we're gonna see what it actually slides at, if it will. 
take out the friction plug. So that's what that one looked like. It got up to 2,400 pounds before it would start to slip. And that's about when the uh, cover would start to uh, tear off of the, the core as well. So. so there is where the cover was getting stripped off of the core.